Father, I just pray that you give me the words to speak during this time. I know you've been putting this video on my heart for a few weeks now and I have not been obedient, but I'm here now. I just pray that you allow the Holy Spirit to speak through me. Everything that I speak comes straight from your heart. And I pray that all in Jesus' name, amen. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a very long time since I've posted anything and that's my fault because I just felt like it wasn't the right time. I felt like I wasn't gonna know exactly how to word everything. I was really just overthinking. But as you guys can tell by the title of this video, I'm gonna be talking about how God freed me from my anxiety and depression. Um, this is a pretty heavy topic and I just want to start off by saying that anxiety and depression is it's different for everybody and everybody's situation is different. For some it's more severe, for some it's not as severe. And looking back, mine was not as severe as it could have been, but I definitely feel like had I continued going down the path I was already on, it would have gotten worse. Another thing that I want to mention is a lot more people have anxiety and depression than you know. You know, a lot of people don't really like to talk about it, and a lot of people who have it don't like to portray that to others. For myself personally, I didn't really tell a lot of people that I had it, and I didn't even realize myself that I had it really until I went to therapy and my therapist had me take a series of tests and she basically diagnosed me with moderate to severe anxiety and depression and when I heard it it wasn't like a huge surprise it kind of just clicked and I was like oh you know that makes sense because of everything I was feeling of everything I was thinking of my outlook and my perception on life yada yada so about this time last year is when I went to therapy and I got that diagnosis she mentioned to me that I was gonna be put on medication and I remember feeling so excited about that I was like wow like that'll help me like that's what I need to get better then out of nowhere I just felt like this overwhelming urge to just crawl away from the situation I didn't like telling people my problems which is ironic because I was always on social media, you know, venting to people who didn't even care about me, who didn't care about my personal life other than it was a way for them to be nosy or I guess live vicariously through me in a way. But when it came to actually getting help and talking to a professional and expressing what was on my mind, what was in my heart, the idea just made me feel stressed it made me feel anxious it made me feel overwhelmed it made me feel like I was being a burden because nobody wants to hear what I have to say it doesn't matter it's not gonna change anything it's not gonna change what I'm dealing with it's not gonna change what I've done it's not gonna change any of that so I stopped going to therapy you know at that point in time I was still placing my happiness in superficial and artificial things um, you know people social media, what I had, how I looked, uh, what other people perceived about me. And that went on for basically the rest of the year. And then at the end of 2019 is when I really hit rock bottom. <laughs> like, it was so bad. I'm not really the kind of person to tell people my business and like tell them everything about myself. So what people knew from social media wasn't even the true extent of what I was feeling. It was just the gist of things. Just a little, hey guys, I'm depressed. Hey guys, I'm, I'm having an anxiety attack right now. Hey guys, I kind of don't want to live anymore. Things like that. In a way, it was attention seeking. It was a cry out for help. But everyone's going through their own thing. For me to expect people to be able to handle that kind of stuff, to be able people who were just as lost as I was now that I'm looking back for me to expect them to handle that kind of thing was selfish but I didn't know what else to do how else to approach it who to talk to and I didn't really want to talk to anybody I remember there were a few people in my life who 
I felt comfortable sharing that kind of thing with. And those situations in and of themselves were extremely unhealthy because they weren't built on the right foundation. I was depending on these things and these people to make me happy and it wasn't working. So it was just a cycle of negativity, hatred, resentment, bitterness, you know? Yeah, so at the end of 2019, I went through a breakup. I think I talked about this a little bit in my testimony video a while ago, but because I didn't know who I was, because I was insecure, because I hadn't healed truly from my past, from just things that I've been through throughout my life, because I had no sense of self-worth, I had no idea how much I'm truly loved and appreciated, I didn't know my value, and because I was placing all of that in the wrong things in people who didn't know that about themselves, when the person who I had placed all of that into broke up with me, I, I literally, <laughs> I literally felt like my life had ended. And it's such a sucky place to be in because no matter how many times people told me that I'm loved, no matter how many times people told me I was worth something, that I mattered, that my future is important, I need to focus on my future, I need to take care of myself, no matter how many times people told me that, it just went in one ear and out the other. And I couldn't for the life of me understand why it was so hard to grasp the advice of the people in my life, like my parents, you know? I didn't understand why I was such a failure. I didn't understand why I was constantly making decisions to hurt myself, to put myself back. It was like I was addicted to pain, but involuntarily because I hated feeling that way, you know? I hated feeling like I was worth nothing. I hated feeling like there was nothing for me in the future. I just didn't know what to do to turn it all around. But after that breakup, I was a hundred times sadder than I was before. If I thought I knew what depression was, I really didn't until that breakup happened. I remember hating myself so much for every mistake that I made, hating that person so much for every mistake that they made, hating the world, hating life. I wanted to go to sleep and never wake up because I couldn't see life without this person. It was so bad. There came a point where I got kicked out of the house. I really thought that that was the end for me. And, you know, I was like sleeping in my car. And if my mom watches this, she's probably gonna say, why are you sharing all this with everybody? But I feel like God's putting it on my heart to be honest because I know there are people who are going through things that I've been through. This is my testimony. This is in a way my encouragement to let you guys know that it gets better but you have to be looking in the right place you have to pursue the right thing yeah but there was a point where i was sleeping in my car because it got so bad with my parents i was being so defiant i didn't want to hear anything they had to say i didn't want to hear anything anybody had to say i didn't want to go to therapy i didn't want to get help from people because i thought all people were the same you know how are you going to help me you don't know what i'm going through i was playing the victim but in a way i was a victim i was a victim to the devil all right while i was kicked out and i was in my car and it was just me by myself you know nobody talking to me it was just me and i was just reflecting and i was just thinking and i was just you know wondering how it all got to that point and I was blaming myself and I was blaming everybody that I thought had a part to play. And I was thinking about how I wanted better, how I had always wanted better, but I didn't know what better was. A little bit before I got kicked out, I had started going to Bible studies with my pastor. He had given me a book he wrote, The God Beyond Your Wildest Dreams. And I remember I brought that book with me when I got kicked out or I voluntarily kicked myself out because I was just all my priorities were just messed up and I figured 
anywhere, anything would be better than being in a house with people who are constantly reminding me that I was a screw up, that I couldn't do anything right. But I, I was just in that car and I would sleep at night and then I would wake up the next morning and I was just driving around and I would just think and I had that book with me and I remember I started praying and I started reading the book. It was in those moments when I was by myself that God really started to speak to me, that I really started to hear what he had to say. It's when I felt his presence the most. Before I got to that point, I was still so convinced that I was in the right, that everybody and everything was against me, that I was never in the wrong, that the pain I may have caused other people was because they caused me pain first. And I remember like even, even though I was scared that I might never be allowed back in the house, even though I was scared that I might have to move to a different state to stay with family who I loved but I wasn't really familiar with, even though I was scared about what next week would hold because I didn't even have a job at this point. When I started to hear God, when I started to feel Him, when I started to recognize His presence, oh my gosh, you guys, all of that fear went away. I was, and, and, and let me remind you, I'm homeless at this point. All my stuff is in the back of my car. I have no idea where I'm gonna go. I have no idea who I can depend on. I know that the people who I call my friends, I can't really depend on them because one, some of them aren't really friends. Two, some of them are going through things that they can't even handle all of my baggage right now. And I don't wanna put that on them. And I started to vent and I started to talk about whatever was on my heart. I started to confess i started to ask for forgiveness i started to pray for people that i loved i started to ask god for another chance i started to ask him to forgive me for being so naive to forgive me for being so stupid and for thinking that i had it right that i had it figured out the whole time for believing that i'm not worth anything for believing that i'm not loved for believing that my life is worthless i started to feel this overwhelming sense of peace even though i couldn't see past next week i was like okay but at least i've got god at least i'm alive at least i'm healthy you know god's been protecting me in my car this whole time i'll be okay you know i started to put my faith in him i started to trust him more and you know then like this whole thing happened my mom texted me and I had to really be stripped of my pride and I had to really come forth and I had to really openly admit my faults and acknowledge that I knew I wasn't right I had to acknowledge that I was wrong for using the fact that I was hurting to hurt the people around me who love me most, who care the most about me. And throughout all of this, I'm still feeling sad. You know, we're human, we, we have feelings. That's how we were created. God doesn't tell us that a relationship with him will take all of the pain away. We'll never feel sad again. We'll never feel angry again. We'll never feel these emotions that we were created to feel again but a relationship with him makes all of that 10 times easier to deal with to put up with his presence is patience his presence is peace even in the midst of chaos his presence is knowing that he's got it covered that you don't have to stress about tomorrow you don't have to worry about today you don't have to worry about anything because as long as you bring it to him he will take care of you one of the key things that happened in my healing through my relationship with god was that i allowed him the chance that he had been waiting for you can be you can be depressed and you can have anxiety and still in a way be the bad guy you know just because you're struggling with something 
doesn't mean that you don't have things that you need to work on internally and that you don't have things that you need to be forgiven for. I needed to realize that I cannot do everything on my own and even though we feel like our feelings are our own, we can't handle them on our own, if that makes sense. We're not meant to carry all of this suffering, all of this pain, all of this guilt, all of this regret, all of this hurt. We're not meant to carry it on our own. We're meant to give that to God, but he's given us free will. So he's given us the choice to say, okay, I recognize you and I recognize who you are for me. I recognize what you've done for me by giving your son for my sins. I'm gonna give everything that I have, everything that I'm trying so desperately to hold on to because I need a sense of control, I'm gonna give that to you because you know what to do with it. You have somewhere you can put it. I don't want it in my heart. I don't want it in my spirit. I'm gonna give it to you because you and you alone have the strength to really diminish it. All of these things, anxiety, depression, anger issues, um, OCD, um, things like PTSD, things like, I don't know why, but I'm thinking of sleep paralysis for some reason. Things like this, things that take away your peace are not of God. They are from the enemy. God is the embodiment of peace. He is the epitome of peace. He is peace itself. He is love itself. Anything that takes that away from you, substantially, anything that prevents you from ever being happy, anything that prevents you from having peace, from being able to sleep peacefully, from being able to enjoy your life, from being able to to be happy and content with the life that God's given you, is not of God it's from the devil and in order for you to combat that in order for you to resist that you have to recognize where it's coming from so many times I found myself resisting God because of what the devil was doing in my life I thought it was all coming from him I knew the devil existed but I didn't think he existed to the extent where he made it his life's mission to make my life a living hell but that's the reality the greatest deception of the enemy is bringing people to believe that God doesn't exist or that if he does exist he is the reason for all of this pain that we're going through he is the reason for all of the deception that we're going through no the purpose of the enemy is to take any good thing and pervert it and to ruin it. Sin exists because the enemy exists. Once I realized where all of this negativity, where all of these feelings and this dark cloud over my head was coming from, and once I realized who I needed to look to in order to really truly deal with that, I hit my breakthrough. There's a Bible verse that I want to read that talks about resisting the enemy. Um, Luke 10 19 says behold I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will injure you this Bible verse lets us know that we have authority over the enemy we have authority over the devil he doesn't get to cause us to feel worthless he doesn't get to to wreak havoc in our lives without consequence he doesn't but we, a lot of the times, don't realize that that's exactly what he's doing and that that's where all of that is coming from. So we don't do anything about it because we don't know that we're meant to do anything about it. We don't know that God is on our side and that God is waiting for us to seek him out so that he can vindicate us. James 4, 7 says that once we submit to God and resist the enemy, that he'll flee from us. And that's not to say that he won't come back every now and then to try and remind us of our past, to try and get us to regret certain decisions, to try and get us to think that we don't have a real relationship with God, that God isn't as good as he says he is. He'll try and get us to feel all these negative emotions to lure us back into the lifestyle we once were. He'll try and lure us back into old habits. He'll try and lure us back into old mindsets. But that's why it's so important for us to adorn ourselves with the full armor of God so that we can stand firm against the schemes of the enemy. I just want to point out that prayer changed my life. The armor that I just mentioned, prayer. 
recognizing who God is, recognizing that you are so loved, that you are not your mistakes, that you are not your past, that you are not what other people have done to you. You're not. God tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. He understands our hearts. He knows exactly what we're feeling and what we're going through. And he understands that it's in our nature to doubt and rely on our flesh and our worldly understanding of things. God doesn't shame us for our sins. He knows exactly where all of that stems from. But instead, he encourages us to give that to him. He encourages us to strip ourselves of our pride. It says in his word that he does not want anyone to perish. God doesn't perceive things the way that we perceive them. He is patience he is patient he is patient he is patient as stubborn as we are he is so patient as stubborn as i was you know you would think that i wouldn't have even made it to this point if you knew me personally but here i am and that's due to his grace that's due to his mercy on me if you don't know who you are in christ if you don't know your worth it makes it so much easier for the enemy to lead you astray and to keep you from recognizing your purpose. So long as you think that the sins you're committing are okay and you're not willing to acknowledge that God says they're not okay and you believe that you can do whatever you want, you're living the way you think you should be allowed to live, you're living for the enemy, you're not living for God. I'm not saying this to shame anybody. I'm saying this because I was there. It breaks my heart seeing people stuck in their ways, but you can't force people to change. They have to want to change. God found me in my dirt and he lifted me up from something that nobody else could have lifted me up from. And I chose to give him that chance. Once you get a glimpse of who God is, you can't unsee it. That's why the enemy will continue to place scales over your eyes, to place distractions in your path, things that you like, things that you think you want for your future, things that you think make you happy. He will use these things to hold you back. He will use these things to keep you from God. Or if you already know God, he will use these things to try and get you to forget who God is for you. I just wanna say that if you're going through anxiety, if you're going through depression, if you're someone who feels like your life is in a cycle of poor decisions, hatred, envy, lust, things that you don't really want to be doing because you feel that there's something better, I just wanna encourage you that there is better and that better is God. And it took me so long to realize it. Once it clicked, it changed my life. I wouldn't change anything because everything that happened, happened for a reason. Whether it was because I made the stupid choice to do something I wasn't supposed to do, God came and he used it for good. And if you don't know where to start, start off by talking to him, start off by praying. It doesn't have to be a super elaborate, long scripture filled prayer. You know, go to him with your heart wide open he knows our hearts. You might as well be honest, you know. He already knows what you're thinking. He already knows what you're feeling. He already knows that you're kind of hesitant, that you don't really know if this is really going to work out the way I or others may say that it's going to work out. But so long as you go with your hands open and you go with your expectations high, he will blow your mind. He will blow your mind. And there are just a few scriptures that I just want to read right now um, to encourage any of you guys who are listening to this and this is resonating with you. Hebrews 13, 6 says, So we say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Think about it. We were created by God. He is such a powerful being. He created this universe. He created the stars. He created the world. The beauty in the world that we see around us. He did that. And he created us. He created human beings. Imagine placing your trust in someone like that. He will never fail you. He can never fail you. If you feel like you've been failed, it's because you were putting your hope in the wrong things. 
is because you were expecting something that he never meant for you to expect. That's something I needed to learn. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And that's just saying that so long as we have God, we don't have to be anxious for anything. Of course, it's our nature to feel like there's something we need to be stressing about, to feel like there's something we need to be worried about. But with God's presence, we don't need to do any of that. We can recognize that there's something we're a little bit anxious about and choose to give that to God and say, I'm not going to worry about this today because I know that you've got it taken care of. Take it. Let me enjoy my day. Let me enjoy my week. Let me enjoy life until that moment comes and then I can deal with it, you know? This scripture has helped me significantly throughout my walk with God because I was always scared. I was always scared for the future. I was always scared I was going to get hurt. I was always scared people were going to hate me. I was just always scared and I was always having nightmares and I was always crying and just sad and just upset and this scripture just gave me so much hope and whenever I found myself feeling scared about anything after I started devoting myself to God, I would just recite this and I would just say it out loud over and over until I felt better. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. This scripture helped me realize that anything that comes my way that is stress-filled, that's trying to provoke me, that's trying to make me feel angry, that's something that's gonna cause me to lash out any kind of situation like that I just remind myself God has not given me a spirit of fear I'm meant to feel peace I'm meant to feel confident in the God that I serve there's no point in stressing over any of this God's got it and the last one I'm gonna say which is actually my favorite favorite Bible verse ever is Psalm 27 1 which says the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Just let that sit. Let that sink in. Wow. I know this is probably a long video. I'm recording right now and it looks like it's a 50 minute, so we'll see where it gets. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope that you understood my rambling. I know it seems like I was probably just rambling, but I was really just speaking you know my heart and I really feel that God was speaking through me because I had notes I didn't even really go off of them <laughs> so um I just pray that whoever this word is for that it resonates with you and that it encourages you and that it leads you to pursue God a little bit more and that it leads you to just desire his presence in your life and understand that all of this is coming out of love. I'm not judging anybody. I'm not saying I'm better than anybody in any way, shape, or form because I was a mess. And sometimes I still am a mess. Nobody's perfect. No one who has walked this earth is perfect. No one who will ever walk this earth is going to be perfect. The only one who walked this earth who is perfect was Jesus Christ himself. Remember that. Hopefully I'll be posting some more videos soon because it's about time I get back into that. But thank you guys for tuning in. Bye. I ended, I ended the video, but as I was walking downstairs, God reminded me of something that I forgot to mention while I was recording earlier. A little bit before I got baptized in July, my mom and I were in the car and she asked me, you know, so your depression, your anxiety, none of that was real. You didn't really have it because I was talking to her about how happy I was and you know everything that God had done for me and what I had learned and that question threw me off and it kind of offended me but I had to catch myself and I had to explain to her and just remind her really everything that we go through without God in our lives is very much so real just because other people don't understand what we're going through does not mean that what we're feeling is not real. And just because God miraculously brought me back from where I was in the past 
does not mean that what I was feeling was not real. That just shows God's immense grace, his immense power. He is the reason I am where I am today. And just because I'm where I'm at does not mean that what I went through in my past gets invalidated. My feelings were very real. Me not wanting to live past the next day was very real. And just because I wasn't on medication, just because I've done a complete 180 through God, might I remind you guys, does not mean that it was not real. I just wanted to put that in there, that people in your life, loved ones who have the best intentions, they may not understand what you're going through, but remind yourself of who God told you you are. Remind yourself of the things that he's spoken into your life. He's spoken over you. You are loved. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You have a purpose, okay? And I felt like I really needed to put that in there. I ran upstairs and I was like, oh, I gotta add that to my video. I can't forget to add that. So here I am, out of breath, sweating, <laughs> adding that for you guys into this video. Um, but yeah, have a blessed day, much love, and I will talk to you guys soon.